Ladies and gentlemen, there's tons of exciting updates coming to Rise of Kingdoms, and the first of which will land in just about a week at the time of recording this with the Thanksgiving event. But also later in the video, we're going to go over the most recent face to face with the developer. I know that I'm a little bit late to this update and that developer feedback. I've had a lot on my content plate lately, but I do know that a lot of you guys do still want to know my thoughts and opinions on these updates that are coming to Rise of Kingdoms. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. This is a relic from my former employer right here now before we begin if you guys appreciate hearing my thoughts and opinions on these updates drop a thumbs up on the video it helps out a ton okay we're gonna actually do something a little bit different this time we're gonna start near the bottom of this update because this stuff is actually some of the most important and interesting stuff to me that i am excited about first of all we have a new king skill called inspire and this says for kingdoms in season two or later your king is going to be able to choose one target on the map and melee troops within a certain range of that target when the skill is cast will take reduced range damage and deal increased ranged counter attack damage this is literally just a way to counter all of the ranged marches that we've been seeing in the field over the past couple of months and honestly this is very good and very very exciting honestly I do think that we needed a way to sort of passively combat the ranged marches because as it stands ranged marches have a significant advantage of just being able to sit in the back and do nothing which is honestly one of the reasons why I haven't invested in ranged because that just feels like a little bit cheesy to me but honestly having a way to deal with them passively is nice I do wonder though like how many gems is this going to cost I feel like Kings already have a lot of gems that they have to spend and so hopefully this is going to be a little bit more affordable because already we have the King skill which we know is a big drain for gems on the Kings of Kingdoms so I suspect this will work just like the king's heal you drop it and in a radius people will be able to be taking less range damage but hopefully it is much cheaper than the king skill and we also have an update to the banish skill that says it has been reduced from 72 hours to 24 hours quick refresher if you guys don't know what banish does it says it banishes a governor in your kingdom teleporting their city to a random location in the upper left province of your kingdom if the target province has no space they'll be teleported to the next outermost province cooldown of 72 hours this update will change the banish time to 24 hours so you're going to be able to banish people in your kingdom a lot more frequently which I think is going to be really nice it's going to give that tool to the kings of kingdoms to manage the kingdom a little bit better which is very good next up we have commander optimizations in the commander talent interface you can now see what percentage of governors selected a given talent this is going to be very good for new players because a lot of us who've been playing the game for a long time we kind of know what the best talents are and what the optimal talent builds would be for given commanders even brand new commanders we kind of know like okay if they have a skill tree you're probably going to go all the way to the end of the skill tree things like that for those of us that have played the game for a long time we know strong of body is a great talent to get but it is kind of off the beaten path here and so for new players they might kind of skip over it they might think it's optional but really we know that's a good talent and so this is a nice change and a welcome change for new players and just players in general who are looking for talent builds I know a lot of you guys always ask me for my talent builds and so maybe this will help with that a lot next is very exciting I'm very excited about this added remastered models for eight commanders of which are Minamoto Cao Cao Joan of Arc Ethelfled Yi Song Ye Alexander the Great Richard the first and Leonidas of all commanders this is very very good news also on the trust page for these commanders you can now use the switch models button to switch between their old and new models this is amazing this is exactly what players wanted when it came to the remastered graphics for commanders at least I know that in the past the developers have revealed some early thought process or early designs of these commanders and there was some pushback on the designs there um I thought for the most part they were okay but there were some things that needed some tweaking and so it, they've gone back to the drawing board and we will see what the new remastered designs are for these commanders will be when they come into the game but even if you don't like them you could just turn it off which is amazing that that satisfies everybody I will say though what are they up to with Leonidas the first like why is he getting a remaster of all commanders right it makes sense to start with the you know gold key commanders and kvk1 commanders because they're in all kingdoms right and they're, that's what new players are going to see and that's very important and especially if the remastered graphics are to appeal to new players then it makes sense to start there but Leonidas is sort of an outlier here and so for me I either think one they don't love his design which I like the way he is designed in the game I think he it looks very very cool so I don't really think that his design is bad I think it's great um maybe they have something planned for Leonidas in the future and they want to make him look as cool as possible I think that's really nice honestly like 
the number one thing they need to do with Leonidas okay they they gave him a really cool animation last year or a really cool cinematic I would say for the release of the Greek civilization which was amazing they also recently gave him a museum relic a little bit of a buff there and now they're going to be giving him a new remastered skin but the truth is you guys what Leonidas really needs is a buff we want to see a buff for Leonidas he is such a beloved commander in the game he's so cool already looking awesome and really like this is very minor okay we need to like quadruple these stats here um like the second relic needs to be like 20 percent march speed 20 percent normal damage taken reduction and then the third tier needs to like double his active skill damage right and if you do that maybe people will use Leonidas again and it will make remastering his design worth it but as it stands right now uh I don't know what they have planned for him right I really have no idea what what they have planned but they are remastering the way he looks he already looks cool maybe we're gonna have like an eight pack instead of a six pack here who knows but I'm still nonetheless excited to see this change coming to the game next up they're updating skill descriptions which is always a welcome change because more transparency for how skills work is beautiful it helps players understand what they're actually getting when they're investing in the commander and here we see that for Kusunoki, Tamiris, Theodora, Pakal, William Wallace, and CPO Emilianus, they are unifying their terminology. Effects that remove debuffs are called cleanses, and effects that remove buffs are now called dispels. This is amazing. I love the distinction. These terms that they're using are very intuitive. I think a lot of players have already been using some of these terms, like cleansing, right? So I'm very happy to see this. We love that. Updated the campaign page. They're adding Champions of Olympia and Cerulli Crisis to the campaign page, which is going to be this page right down here. If you guys didn't know they will now show up here which I think makes a lot of sense I think that th they might as well use this page more because it hasn't been updated in years and also um, this is going to really just clear up the event page right there's already so many things that happen on the event page and the event tab and the calendar and things like that so having these in a more intuitive place uh in the campaign page they are campaigns after all that's very very good so i'm happy to see that and there's going to be progress and un unlock requirements which i like a lot um there's an update to flux script gifting i don't know how many players actually use this or do this but now you'll basically have a transaction history where you can see who you've sent and received from which is very good next we have a chat optimization so they're optimizing how battle reports and armaments shared in chat and threads look which is nice and threads for lost kingdom okay that's cool optimized and unified troop shortcut settings for pc i don't they didn't really elaborate on this so i don't know what this actually means next we have increased the effects of upgrading your scout camp you can now dispatch multiple scouts to explore at once this is an amazing change i hate clearing fog in the kvks where you actually have to do that so i'm very happy to hear about this change this is a two thumbs up for me added new commander stories for ragnar and ragnar prime okay that's really cool i think that maybe these stories will give us more of a distinction as to why there's two different legendary ragnars so i'm looking forward to seeing that adjusted the descriptions of the butterfly effect and causative inscriptions to more accurately reflect their actual effects this is very good again textual changes i'm always going to welcome them if they make the game more clear to understand removed all city theme debuffs city themes will now only provide buffs this is a crazy change and I personally am very excited for this because I am going to benefit from this I have a zenith of power skin for infantry that I got many years ago it is a very good zenith of power skin except I lose cab defense and archer attack so there's always been a downside for me and you know that was a little bit rough but now I'm just going to get 10% infantry health, no downside at all. And if you guys don't have a Zenith of Power skin, don't worry. This is going to come to every epic skin in the game as well. So this is beautiful. I love this change for a couple of reasons. First of all, now you're going to be more flexible with what skin you can use because sometimes there would be a skin that you love, but the debuff was not good, right? Like you would get maybe a few percent. Uh, let, let, let me show you guys an example here, okay? All Kingdom Carnival. Let's say you have this skin and you really love the idea of extra infantry health but you don't want to lose five percent health for your maybe you have one or two archer marches you don't want to lose archer health right and so that means that even though you have this skin and you love the buff on the skin you may never actually use it because of that debuff and you'll always choose to use something else such as the white tower for example which personally i actually really love this this gives me like world of warcraft for the alliance vibes okay this gives me stormwind city vibes which i absolutely love i want to see more skins like this personally but anyway 
um, you'll always be using something like white tower or people use gingerbread house historically for years because it is such a great combination of buff and debuff right so you would see gingerbread house often even though people didn't like this skin they would use it for the buffs and now you are no longer going to be locked into using that you're going to be free to use whichever city skin you want that has the buff that you want which i think is very good and also this is also very good for the uh, for the skins that are in the combat shop for kvk okay this is going to i mean twilight falls oh my god dude twilight falls is not gonna have an infantry attack debuff anymore i'm so as someone who runs two infantry marches i'm so excited for this this is so good for twilight falls okay if you are an infantry main you just got such a nice little pseudo buff here with twilight falls it's incredible but also this gives you a, more of a reason to get some of these city skins and you know these are all going to be accessible even to free-to-play players right free-to-play players have historically always had access to this combat shop and yes there are things here that might be uh, a better use of your coins these days but you know sometimes you would look at something like this and say okay well this is a decent buff but there's also a debuff and so i might as well just use the five percent health skin that i have that's an epic but now you have to look at do you want five percent health or ten percent defense and neither of them have downsides some players are going to go for the health but many of you might go for actually infantry defense which is going to be very cool things like flight of the heron or also divine abode is very attractive to me now right i'm very excited for divine abode especially if our next cav release is very strong i might be getting my hands on this because resource production is great and this will be my best cavalry skin so we'll have to wait and see but like these skins also getting a buff here like now you can run persian dream and just have a defense skin and a health healing skin like that's really good so i'm really excited for this change i'm a little bit worried if i'm being honest with you i'm a little worried that this is going to make a zenith of power skins even more strong than they already are uh without them having any debuffs that's definitely going to potentially be a, a problem but for right now i would say that the way that it is set up i'm very happy to see that these city themes are no longer going to have debuffs i think back when these were first introduced at the beginning of the game there was more of an idea of running all you uh army of a single troop type right like when the game first came out you would run like three armies of all calves right and you just be a cav main things have changed since then and i think that removing the debuffs reflects that and that is good next we have some chat terminology uh basically commonly used terms that you use in chat are going to have an underline for them so you can define what they are this is very good again for new players because a lot of times we'll use terms like aoe right which is like what is that if you're a new player who doesn't know you don't know what aoe is like now you're going to be able to know things like pvp or pve those are terminologies that we throw around all the time if this is your first rpg you might not know what those mean right so this is very good one little tip i'll give to the developers what they should do is make 5511 or 5551 or something like that make all those different configurations make those commonly used terminology because a lot of players ask me what do you mean by 5511 right and for older players you know what I mean you mean the skill distribution I want that to be something that's defined here but overall this is very good let's move on to some other changes that we're seeing here we have the event optimization this guys is probably how we're going to be getting Ragnar Prime okay our Viking commander event series has made landfall legend of the North Sea choose your preferred commander and claim amazing gifts every every day so this I suspect and they didn't confirm it here but I think this is how we're going to get our hands on Ragnar Prime I want to know if this is only going to include Viking commanders right like if you're going to be able to choose between Ragnar Prime regular Ragnar or Herald it's a no-brainer in my opinion Ragnar Prime is just way better than the rest of them right so that's going to be really interesting to see who knows um I I want to know what commanders are going to be available here but that is very very cool a will to skill use universal commander sculptures to upgrade certain commanders skills to earn a ton of rewards the above events will only be available in regions where kingdoms have existed for more than three weeks specific rewards and list of commanders included will vary depending on your kingdom season that's very good this event will be around for pretty much all kingdoms in the game and this is very exciting because this to me i mean if you think about more than gems right um or even like the 7k gem event for for holidays in those events you kind of like get back some of what you've spent right in the 7k gems event you spend 7,000 gems and then I think you get like 6,000 gems back or something like that and plus the other rewards you go gem positive basically by doing it okay same thing with the more than gems event you spend your gems on things you were already go already going to do and you get back value in the form of like legendary commander sculptures and other goodies right I'm wondering if what they're gonna do is make this a way where if you spend your sculptures on maybe older commanders you actually get back some legendary commanders in the form of rewards or legendary commander sculptures in the form of rewards sorry so it would effectively be cheaper in that way 
to expertise older commanders um, i think that would be a very cool way to get players to invest in some of these older commanders or other commanders and also give players an incentive to invest in commanders that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise right for example if we look at a commander like guan yu a lot of older or sorry a lot of newer players do not invest in guan yu because the skill distribution that you need for him is very weird 5155 is optimal but it's very hard to get that but what if during this event you get like I don't know, a hundred sculptures back by, by like expertising him, then like, okay, well maybe it's not as bad now to get a Guan Yu. That's just sort of my thought process, right? Going forward. Um, same thing, you know, with like Joan of Arc prime, right? Like five, five, one, five is how people want to get her. Uh, a lot of times it's hard to do that. So maybe having a reward for investing in those commanders to kind of offset the cost of how expensive they are. And, and the fact that you might not get an optimal build for them, that could be really cool. I'm excited to see what this is. Hopefully this doesn't give you a huge advantage for investing in older commanders because then those of us that invested in them a long time ago are going to feel kind of like oh man like i invested in them a while ago and i don't get any reward for it right so we'll have to wait and see but overall getting rewards for upgrading commanders is amazing because you're going to upgrade commanders anyway right so now this is kind of going to be like in my mind like a more than gems but for commander upgrades right you might want to just wait until this event comes around before you expertise a commander so that way you can get some rewards for doing the thing that you were going to do anyway overall love this can't wait to find out the details but this is a very very good thing next up we have a new champions of olympia map and it fixed a balanced mode uh, issue where the relics weren't working i honestly haven't played champions of olympia in a long time and it is long overdue i need to just do a live stream where we just try out all the new stuff for champions because i haven't played it in a, like oh, two years or something increase the maximum number of mechanisms you use for uh Dal dalrook's puzzle box cool uh, adjusted the rules of the commander trial for returning players nice stuff here not gonna go too far into that um also new black friday bargains are coming i i'm excited to see what it is i hope it's good value i don't remember if last year's was good value or not but hopefully this one will be good next up we have lost kingdom Op optimization now this is a big one okay adjusted the rules for spawning support skills in heroic anthem and they also deleted infrequently used ones also added epic commanders this is all good okay this is all good stuff here's the part that's really interesting for season of conquest kingdoms the level cap for barbarians outside of the lost kingdom has been increased to 40. so outside of the lost kingdom means home kingdom question mark like that's the only thing that I can think of right so home kingdom I guess is getting level 40 barbarians that's amazing the level cap for resource points has been increased to eight that's also amazing these are two extremely good updates to home kingdom it gives you way more value in between kvks right being able to I mean right now we have resource nodes up to level six in home kingdom so going up to eight means that it's actually going to be better to stay in home kingdom than it is to stay in your starting zone of kvk right because the starting zone i think only gives you up to level seven nodes, if i'm not mistaken right so this is actually a huge change this is very very good i'm very excited for this the only question that i have here is what about barbarian forts because right now it's kind of the meta to do a one plus one barbarian fort and if you guys don't know what that is it's basically where you launch a rally and then one person joins you and that's it you don't let anybody else in because the third player could just as well start their own rally and you get twice the rewards for that right and of course it only takes you know one plus one players to take down one of the barb forts because they're very weak in home kingdom by the time you're in the end game so right now the meta is kind of to spend your ap on that but if we have level 40 barbs chaining level 40 barbs is probably going to be a better value than grinding the barb forts i'd have to do the math but i suspect that will be the case and so if they don't increase the level of the forts in home kingdom that could change the meta on how we spend our ap in home kingdom and i wonder what effects that's going to have uh, moving forward i don't i mean we'll have to wait and see but i'm very excited to see what that what happens with that maybe they will increase the level cap of barb forts as well or maybe they don't want people to do so many barb forts maybe they want you to do uh, barbarians instead because for well for whatever reason maybe to i, I don't really know either way i'm very excited about this anyway moving on they're adjusting the difficulty for each stage of the past glory event that's also very good uh, even in a kingdom like mine that is very active some of the levels of past glory i mean we literally 
as I'm recording this, we literally just got it uh, like moments ago, right? Moments ago. Um, but like some of these take a really long time, okay? Um, a million progress here could take a while, even for an active kingdom. And stage two, where you do barbarians and forts, that takes a very long time, even for active kingdoms, right? Maybe if your kingdom is huge, then you can get through it uh, quickly. But from my experience, and also like some players just don't, they can't be bothered, right? We just got done uh, in pre KBK grinding Marauders and grinding Marauder forts. And now we have to basically do the same thing again for stage two of past glory. It's like, I don't know. I mean, I get that there's rewards there and it's, it's good. You get crystals and everything like that. But like having these be a little bit shorter might be a good thing because it just gets us through it and everybody knows like past glory stage three is is where it's at okay this is where you know you want to be donating your sculptures that you don't care about so you can get legendary heads for it um we love past glory stage three so that is that so overall i'm glad to hear that they're optimizing that because i do think that it needed optimization imagine what they mean by that is that they're going to make it like longer take longer that would be crazy i would be very disappointed in that but i assume that this is going to be a good thing both the kingdom chronicles and lost kingdom chronicles will now show the default duration of each chapter this is amazing added a reminder tooltip that two chapters that will end immediately if objective is achieved and the maximum number of coalition markers has been increased from 10 to 20. these are very good changes right here um, this just takes a little bit of stress off of leadership so that way like they don't have to constantly ask answer questions of when is this path opening when is that happening everyone could just look and check for themselves and that is very very good also more markers is always a good thing next we have some combat optimizations they're basically going to be adding a new faster way to zoom in and out on the map okay they're going to add a radial menu to the return to city button which i think is very good i think maybe this will be even faster than zooming out with like a mouse or pinching to zoom they're adding a new filtered mode which will allow you to quickly filter out allied enemy and your own troops and it also allows you to select which specific elements you want to display or not display adding this is basically just giving you more customization to how things look in combat for you specifically and i love that added a quick command setting if enabled when you have a troop selected tapping an open space on the map will order the troop to move there and tapping a target will order the troop to attack it so this effectively is identical to right clicking on pc okay right now if you have a troop selected and you right click on the map they will walk there same thing if you right click an enemy they will attack them okay this is the same exact thing but it looks like it will be available for mobile as well that is going to be amazing for mobile players i'm very excited to see how that works they're also adding a combat visual effects quality setting that allows you to adjust the quality of combat visual effects again this is also very good for players who have an older phone older device older tablet you're going to be able to just lower that quality a little bit so that way you optimize the performance of your device and also for those of us that don't really necessarily care about the quality you really only care about seeing what's important on the battlefield you can turn those things down and you don't have to worry about any sparkles flashing lights explosions or anything like that very nice to see that we have that option now if the number of true portraits being displayed on screen exceeds the limit displaying portraits closer to the center of the screen will be given greater priority this is how it should work that's amazing love to see that this is going to make it easier to understand what's happening in big group fights next it says all types of battle reports will now display a battle evaluation rally and garrison battle reports will use new battle evaluation rules this is going to be very good to see just at a glance like are we winning these exchanges or are we not I think the fact that they've already included a way to kind of squish all your battle reports and all of your you know exchanges into one summary of like this is how many subs you dealt this is how many subs you took and here's the ratio of your performance that was a great way to determine how good am i doing in the field this ideally will be that but it will literally just tell you like you're popping off okay so this is going to be very good especially for rally and garrison next we see when dispatching troops to attack barbarians the auto recommendation system will be less likely to choose gatherers love that optimized troop animations now they should be able to more smoothly march around turns okay we love that the game is going to just look better when you're marching around we love it next we have arco osiris optimizations they basically shortened the silver battlefield and they've made it so that way you have a smaller team this is a great option for smaller kingdoms smaller alliances and for people that don't have as much time to dedicate to arco osiris i think this is overall a good thing and they've lowered the requirements to earn the rewards they changed the number of coordinators for the golden battlefield and you're going to be able to split the individual stats now between silver and gold which is also really nice and balanced custom matches are now going to remember your last uh talents equipments and loadout and everything like that which is very good finally we have the uh gobble down our thanksgiving
Thanksgiving event series. Here we see the Thanksgiving events are making a return this year. Obviously, every Thanksgiving we get a event very similar to this, almost identical, right? Pretty much the same every single year. So this is going to be more of the same. It's going to be where you're collecting things on the map to make your Thanksgiving dinner with your alliance. All this stuff is going to be very good. We have the In Search of Wonders event, Thanksgiving feast, cordial invitation, treasure hunt, race against time, might and munificence, and Thanksgiving dinner. Overall, huge update. So many quality of life things. So many insanely positive things that I'm very excited about. And here we have a feedback button. If you think this is good, if you like the stuff here, give them feedback, encourage them to continue making uh, changes like these that the community really loves. If you don't like this update, let them know why, but make sure you're constructive. Don't use any negativity curse words, anything like that. Just be like, Hey, this is why I think this might not be as good as you think and give them that feedback. I'm sure they will really appreciate it. There's a reason they ask for your feedback. There's a reason they put it in bold. There's a reason that it's a different color. They want you to click this please do it. They will give you a free gift. They are literally telling you we will basically bribe you to give us feedback. Okay. Good or bad. Doesn't matter. Give them feedback. Okay. Now let's go over the face to face with the developers. And I know I'm a couple I'm late here. Okay. I'm late, but my content schedule has been crazy lately. So I do want to touch on some of the very important things here. Some of which are actually already addressed in this Thanksgiving update, which is how quickly they're putting this stuff in the game, which is amazing. Here we have the first question. Are you going to add more quality of life tools to the game, such as a speed up resource calculator or kingdom management tools? Basically, they've already designed a speed up and resource calculator and will launch them as soon as they're able to. So what this means is basically you're going to be able to come into your uh, into your game here and you come into your bag and it's literally just going to tell you how many resources that you have of every like resource type. OK, it's going to say, you know, maybe at the top or on the side here somewhere, it's going to say you have this many million food, this many, this many million wood. Here's how many million resources you have in your resource chests. This is all amazing things. I'm very happy to see that same thing with speed ups. It's going to be like, Hey, you have this many days of, you know, research speed ups, training speed ups, universal speed ups, whatever. Seeing all that at a glance is amazing. I know a lot of people have been calculating that manually. And so having it in the game just by default is going to relieve a lot of stress from players who have been doing it manually. So I'm very happy to see that next they talk about things like DKP calculators or trackers. And it looks like that not enough people are really um, want that. Okay. So they're not going to be doing anything like that, but they're probably going to be looking at more possible features in the future for kingdom management and like keeping track of performance and things like that. So it'll be nice to see what they eventually come up with. Next we have, why do city teams have debuffs? They should get rid of them. And they are, we already went over that next we have will there be more ways to obtain transmutation crystals in the future for those of you that don't know this is a transmutation crystal this is a transmutation stone so here they're talking about transmutation crystals and these are what let you reset the armament transmutation chances okay so you have 10 chances to transmute and you use transmutation stones if you run out of transmutation chances then you use a transmutation crystal and these are right now at the time of recording this quite rare i only have four of them and i haven't used any since last kvk and so here they're are saying that they are going to be adding more ways to obtain them but they don't have any specifics to share just yet but either way it's great to see that they were getting more of them next they addressed new formations okay whenever a new one is added i need to invest a ton of resources into it even though i haven't finished working on existing formations this is a big problem for especially right now for uh you know archer players who are working on the circle formation and previously it was for the arch formation for infantry players right also we have the delta formation coming out and people are suspecting that that's either going to be great for infantry or for calves so big question marks there but here we see they're saying we are working on ways to reduce the resources and time required to acquire and replace armaments without devaluing armaments that players have already invested in possibilities we are currently considering include providing more ways to get armaments optimizing the guarantee system adding an ability to convert armaments into other formations and more love to see that the more optimizations to that system the better i think armaments were released in a very poor state personally but in the year since they have really optimized armaments to make it way better is it perfect no are we getting there i think so so further optimizations i love to see that okay next we have constant kvk is stressing me out it's hard to build up the required resources in off season they've acknowledged this okay this is huge in a future update we are adding a partial refund of healing resources at the end of each kvk you'll be refunded a percentage of the resources you spent on healing units during the kvk we hope this mechanic will make kvks less costly and make it easier to prepare 
for the next one yes it absolutely will it depends on what the percentage is so right now with the hall of heroes you get 50 percent of your dead troops back is this going to be a 50 percent resource refund probably not okay it's probably not i suspect it will be anywhere from 10 percent maybe 25 percent would be like the highest i could see it being whatever it is i'm excited for this regardless it's going to be millions of resources hundreds of millions of resources potentially that we could be getting back every single kvk if not more this is very good okay this is going to cut down on the amount that you have to log into farm farm accounts and for some players it might completely eliminate the need to log into their farm at all if they're active enough on their main i love this i'm very happy to hear this so this is a massive w this is this is a massive w so excited for this next people are saying individual kvks are too long with a lot of boring stretches in the middle will you be shortening them they are looking at ways to trim the fat basically um and that's all that they've said truthfully i don't mind kvks i don't mind their current length because if we look at the pr previous question right uh constant kvk is stressing me out well if if all of kvk is just constant like fighting 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 it's exciting right but if there's no downtime in between it can get stressful for a lot of just casual players and so if you're going to shorten kvks and remove all the fat well then it's just gonna be constant fighting 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 so i i think that this is a little bit antithetical to the previous question and answer but there certainly are a lot of downtimes during kvk and especially after king's line has already decided it's like okay we already know who's taking king's line let's just get this over with let's move on to the next one let's go back to home kingdom etc so we'll have to see what they actually do here but hopefully they don't make it too like insane next they talk about the kvk matchmaking algorithm and, and you know how people like have to delete troops and things like that kicking non-combatant players basically they said that there's a little bit of misunderstanding as to how the current algorithm works power is not an only factor and troop power is actually having very little impact they're also saying that they're designing a new algorithm that doesn't factor in true power so soon you won't have to worry about the number of tier 5 siege in your kingdom because it won't matter at all so that's really exciting i'm happy to hear that they also added the vacation permit feature and they're going to be adjusting ideally it says they're considering uh, adjusting the number of vacation permits given to each kingdom based on activeness so i love to see that that was definitely something that people were concerned about there was only a handful of vacation permits available to the king for every kvk so i'm happy to see it um next we see the threshold for being an imperium is too low every time we want to take new players we have to cut our true power this kind of is addressed in the previous question as well and while the number of players in imperium kingdoms is a very small percentage of the player base right like in the grand scheme of things if you if you look at the whole game imperium kingdoms is like a tiny percentage of the player base but it is a very engaged very active very important core part of the community and so making sure that imperiums are healthy is probably a really good thing will there be more ways to acquire passport pages in the future even though you can theoretically get them in the alliance shop for free most alliances aren't willing to spend the alliance credit to restock them and they said that this is huge in the future passport pages in the alliance shop will automatically restock every week which should make it easier for players to acquire them this is amazing i'm very happy to see this we've needed this for a while a lot of players are stuck in dead kingdoms in toxic kingdoms in kingdoms that they just don't they don't like the people that they're playing with but because they're free to play they don't have a way of getting those passports and also alliances have to really save and spend their credits wisely for kvk and so really a lot of alliances didn't want to spend there right not just because they want to keep players hostage but because they need to be smart with how they have their with how they spend their alliance funds and so this is really good i would challenge the developers though why not make the alliance shop automatically restock every week for everything right a lot of other games in this genre and in this category have alliance shops that just have things in them every week period you don't have to spend any alliance currency and i think that's the way that the alliance shop should work in rise of kingdoms as well it should be a thing that you look forward to every week and a sort of gift for being in an active alliance um i think that this is a great start adding passport pages for free every week is amazing let's expand that to the whole alliance shop and give players more ways to get vip points more ways to get you know speed ups and and things along those lines i think i have 56 million credits and i will never use all them and i still have ways to get even more right so you know unless this alliance shop refreshes automatically like where we rarely will spend things for the shop but like think about all the things in here that would be amazing for free-to-play players to get their hands on civilization changes that's amazing we really should be giving these to free-to-play players uh, maybe if not every week at least once a month or something like that right again vip points talent resets these are really great things for us to be getting our hands on maybe we get a couple of these every month refreshed for free i think that would be super 
super super super good okay i hope that they consider doing it obviously the passport pages are the biggest one that's why they're gold here they're in they're in orange they're the most important thing here so starting with this is great but let's expand this to more things here and i think a lot of players will be really happy with that question 10 this is supposed to be a mobile game but as of right now using mobile controls puts you at a disadvantage against people playing on pc will you be optimizing mobile controls and here we've already seen them putting the answer into the thanksgiving update where you tap to march tap to attack that is their solution also the filter mode that we talked about before that's going to help out players a ton i will say though just to be very transparent mobile will always be a disadvantage compared to pc it's no question and this is not a rise of kingdoms problem this is gaming in general is always better on pc why you have a mouse and keyboard the mouse is precise you have a dedicated graphics processor a, a super strong i mean i have a mega powerful gaming pc i can hardwire it into you know gigabit fiber connection to my to my fios verizon fios right like there's just no way a phone is ever going to compete with the rig that i have here in terms of performance and in terms of connectivity and speed right uh, there's just no way so i'm really happy to see that the developers are trying to make it as good as possible to play on mobile and also on like ipads and things like that but at the end of the day i want to be very clear with you guys if you want to play rise of kingdoms in the best possible way and you want to be as competitive as possible there is no beating pc and it will never it will never be better than pc i'm sorry that no matter what they do it's always going to be better on pc uh the pc client for rise of kingdoms is buttery smooth it's so good okay it is so good and you can play on like a massive screen so this is the way to play to rise of kingdoms i'm glad that they're making it better for mobile users of course right of course but if you want to be super competitive at some point you, you should probably try to get your hands on, on a pc i know that's not possible for everybody i'm not ignorant to that fact computers can be very expensive okay especially these days there's so many you know things that take priority in the budget than a computer of course right so making this as good as possible for mobile players is great but i do just want to set the expectation at least so you guys understand like mobile will never be better than pc it's not even it's technically and objectively impossible but i'm glad the devs are trying as best as possible what other quality of life improvements will you be adding we're in the process of several quality of life improvements such as exploring fog sending out scouts in in batches faster exploration and the ability to automatically claim village rewards this is very important stuff very happy to see let me share with you guys some more uh quality of life improvements that i personally would like to see in rise of kingdoms first of all when i go to speed up training or i go to speed up a building or technology something like that there should be a button that just says quick speed up and it should just automatically use the optimal number of hours and minutes for that remaining you know time frame right so for example here it should use you know some eight hours some one hours and some minutes whatever uh it shouldn't overflow or whatever it shouldn't prioritize only the highest ones it should use the perfect optimal amount of the speed ups that I already have. This is a feature in virtually every other game in the genre on mobile, and it is a beloved feature that players love. And so I would really like to see them do that for Rise of Kingdoms. Of course, this would, especially for training, make some items in the game a little bit less valuable, like the level six reserves, right? That would be a little bit less valuable for, you know, speed training for things like Mightiest Governor or for like of the Power. But at the end of the day, that would be a massive quality of life improvement that all players would benefit from nobody would complain about that it would be so good to add that the next feature that rise of kingdoms needs to add is as a quality of life feature is an auto barbarian mode okay what we need to see here in rise of kingdoms is you basically search for a barbarian and you know whatever the level is it, it's up to you and you basically can click an auto attack button and essentially what it would do is just send your army around and automatically kill the barbarians until you're out of stamina right we need that feature uh, grinding barbs and grinding stamina is just it's kind of a pointless time commitment in a game where we already have so many other things to be doing and focusing on and other games in this genre already have features like this where you can automatically farm barbarians and it is beloved by players people love the auto barbarian feature it is an s tier quality of life improvement and i i hope i'm praying that rise of kingdoms gets it eventually a couple of other things um speaking of searching okay we should be able to search for barbarian forts at this point there is no immersion in finding a barbarian fort there's no point in that um it's kind of just a waste of time nobody likes looking for bar for barbarian forts it doesn't add anything to the game it doesn't improve the player experience honestly it's just kind of frustrating so let's just have a feature where you search for barb forts i think that makes a lot of sense again 
other games in the genre do this and it it's something that people really really love i can you do that in call of dragons now i think you can even do that in call of dragons now so like there's no excuse here finally um do not make me click these don't don't make me click these okay when people make a, a purchase in the alliance i should be able to click a button to claim all um this is an antiquated system once again uh making purchases if you're in like a really strong kingdom a really really strong alliance and people are making purchases all the time then purchases are not novel experiences right you're no longer going to be like individually thanking people for buying a you know a stone chest or something like that right so like i understand why they have it to where like you should acknowledge manually every single player that spends money because you know you're thanking them in, in a way or you have the ability to at least see them and thank them but at the end of the day this is an old system you already have a claim all button just make this button include the rare gifts um it's a this would be a massive quality of life thing i know this is a whale problem okay i know like a lot of you watching might be saying well people don't even spend in my alliance very often so this isn't really a problem and that's true but for the rest of us like it's annoying logging in and having to claim all my free stuff oh my god what a problem that is omni arc oh you're so you're so entitled i know i know but like let's be real like why not right why not just just make it so the button claims everything i think a lot of people would be happy about that and that would be a nice really really good quality of life improvement those are a couple of just added things that i think that we should have uh in the game right I, I think you guys can let me know in the comment section below if i miss anything is there anything that uh let's open this for the video is there anything that i missed that you guys would like to see as a quality of life upgrade let me know in the comment section below and also while you're down there let me know what you think about all these changes coming to the game i think these are some really good changes like this is very positive stuff for the game and the direction of the game these are a lot of these things are things that we've been asking for forever so i'm really excited to see what is coming next for rise of kingdoms but guys with that being said if you made it all the way to the end of the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton that helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and again like i said before comment down below what you think about these updates what you think about my quality of life improvements that i suggested and do you have more let me know in the comment section below and possibly let them know in the feedback section as well more quality quality of life things that you would like to see I really my number one is that auto barbing thing that's like top top tier we need that bro oh my god now that I've experienced it in other games I need it in rise of kingdoms it's so good anyway guys with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace